I want you to imagine me at 12 years old seeing this commercial back in 1999 for the first time. I actually still remember the day I first saw it. I was at my friend's house watching Cartoon Network, and there it was, our favorite Nintendo characters pummeling each other. We immediately begged for a ride to Walmart to purchase the game. You see, a game like Super Smash Bros., it was unique for its time. Nintendo usually kept all of their franchises separate. Sure, you would see the occasional Easter egg or cameo every now and then, but nothing like this. It was all of our favorite characters in one game. Not only that, but they were fighting each other. Crazy! Super Smash Bros. began as an experiment, a fun side project for developers HAL Laboratories. Now it is one of Nintendo's most popular franchises and a staple in professional fighting game tournaments. It's time to take a look back and see where it all began. And it all started as an idea by Kirby creator Masahiro Sakurai back in 1998. The year is 1998, and Kirby creator Masahiro Sakurai is hard at work on HAL Laboratory's next big game. The project kept Sakurai busy, but that didn't stop him from thinking of other ideas for games. One particular idea he had was a fighting game for the casual gamer at home. 2D fighting games at the time were everywhere, with the best versions being in the arcade. The problem was, casual gamers felt intimidated to play in the arcades due to the competitive nature of the games. Sakurai wanted to change that, making an easily accessible console fighting game that anyone can play, master, and enjoy. Sakurai worked on his new passion project on the weekends. However, he needed help with the programming. He approached his boss, Satoru Iwata, with his fighting game idea. The timing couldn't have been better. Iwata, too, had ideas for new games, particularly one that used the N64's analog stick and the four-player capabilities built into the system. Iwata agreed to help Sakurai program the game, which they initially dubbed Four-Player Battle Royale. Over time, the two had a working prototype and had named it Dragon King The Fighting Game. They slapped some generic faceless characters into the game for demonstration purposes. Sakurai was happy with the foundation, and the game was fun to play, but it lacked a real identity. He wanted to make the atmosphere more interesting to the player. Fighting games in arcades were different because players played the game to fight and challenge each other. Character development wasn't that big of a deal. But a fighting game on the home console had to have a good atmosphere to keep the player in the game hooked. So what better atmosphere than the world of Nintendo? Without permission, Sakurai and Iwata threw some Nintendo characters into the game. It was a perfect match, but what would Nintendo think? They nervously pitched the game to the company with no idea as to how they would take it. Turns out, Nintendo loved it and approved the use of their characters in the game. This was a huge relief to Sakurai. Not only did he have a cast of characters and levels, but he had the branding of Nintendo behind his game. Their next challenge, believe it or not, was to sell the product. Market research showed that gamers in Japan weren't too excited about having their favorite characters beat each other up. Nintendo hyped the game by releasing a playing guide online to show gamers the ins and outs of the game. On January 21st, 1999, Nintendo released Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo 64 to the Japanese public. The game sold better than expected, and three months later it made its way to North America, where it became a hit. Super Smash Bros. sold over 5 million units, 3 million of those in North America. It's the fifth best-selling game on the Nintendo 64. So now let's talk about the actual game. How good is the original Super Smash Bros. 15 years later? Actually, it's pretty damn good. And a big reason for that are the controls. They are so precise and accurate in this game that it still makes it fun and easy to play. There aren't any complicated combos to learn for each fighter. Every move for each fighter is executed in the same way and at the most will require two buttons to use. Each character is highly unique with their moves coming from their respective games. After playing, you will quickly find a character you excel with and stick with them. One of the most unique features of Super Smash Bros. is the way you actually have to win. In standard fighting games, you knock your opponent's life bar down to zero. But Super Smash Bros. is all about knocking the character off the stage. The percentages sort of act as a life bar in that the higher the percent of damage a character has, 
the easier it becomes to knock them off. Another feature you don't usually see are items. Items will randomly drop during battles that can help you, but also hurt you. You'll recognize a few of these items from the Nintendo franchises they come from. Overall, Super Smash Bros. isn't that big of a game. The single player is quick and fairly easy, and doesn't really mix anything up after you've played through it a few times. It's pretty shallow, actually. The real joy of Super Smash Bros. is the multiplayer. Four player battles with a bunch of options including timed battles, stock battles, item switches, and team battles. This is where Super Smash Bros. stands out and why it became so popular. I know growing up, multiplayer mode was pretty much all we played once we unlocked all the secrets. So with Super Smash Bros. being a success, what was next for Sakurai and his new franchise? With sales better than expected, Nintendo turned back to HAL Laboratories for a sequel. Their new system, the GameCube, was coming out. With more powerful hardware, Super Smash Bros. could turn into a flagship title for the system. Masahiro Sakurai was made director once again, and began undertaking his biggest gaming project yet. There are lots of firsts for him. His first disc-based game. His first use of real polygons. His first use of orchestrated music. He wanted it all, and Nintendo gave him the means to do it. It was all up to him now to put it together. To quote Sakurai, I was a man on a mission. Compared to the original, Super Smash Bros. Melee was going to be huge. The game featured 13 more playable characters, new levels, new modes, mini-games, and unlockables. Other developers wanted in on the game too. Hideo Kojima, creator of the Metal Gear Solid series, wanted Solid Snake in the game. But the game was already too far in development to include him. Nintendo commissioned three graphics studios to create this stunning opening movie for the game, and showed it off at E3 2001. Advertisements were played during showings of the Pokemon movie in Japan. Gamers were excited. The press was excited. The game looked incredible, and everything seemed to be coming together. But for Masahiro Sakurai, it was a dark and stressful time. He would work up to 40 hours straight, sleep for four hours, then head back to work. He wouldn't take any holidays, or stop work on Sunday. Sakurai stated, I pushed myself beyond any limit I could think of. But he and his team's hard work paid off by creating the sharpest, most polished Super Smash Bros. game available. Super Smash Bros. Melee is a huge game compared to the original. There are so many extra modes, options, and collectibles. The single player game has added an adventure mode that offers some platforming levels. It has... some kind of story? I don't know. It's more than just the classic mode, so that's a plus. Just like the first game, the strengths of Melee lie in its deep multiplayer, and they really went all out. They added a ton of extra options and modes to customize your multiplayer fights, including a tournament mode. Probably my favorite addition is the extra bonus game, Home Run Contest. You have to beat this sandbag up as much as possible, then hit it as far as you can with the bat. Along with all the unlockable characters and stages, Melee also added trophies for players to unlock. During single player, you can find these trophies, or you can collect coins from winning battles and use the lottery. The trophies are actually one of the best parts about the game. They're addicting to collect, and browsing through the gallery provides some nice information about each one. To date, Super Smash Bros. Melee has sold 7 million copies, making it the best-selling GameCube game of all time. IGN stated, it put the original to shame, and their readers chose it as the game of the year. GameSpot claimed it was one of the most engaging multiplayer games available for any console platform. Melee also burst onto the competitive gaming scene. In 2004, Major League Gaming added Melee to its tournament roster. Most recently, it has become a staple of the Evolution Championship Series, also known as EVO, an annual fighting game tournament held in Las Vegas. After the success of Melee, Sakurai went back to work on other projects for HAL Laboratories, but there was a growing rift between him and the company. Sakurai felt HAL was making too many sequels. In 2003, he decided to leave the company and start his own, Sora. The future of the Super Smash Bros. series was suddenly up in the air.